Thanks to SCU for having me along today. It's, it's a topic that I discuss a lot, actually, with potential employees, actually. And just giving employees a bit of direction where I think the industry is going. So when we look at hiring employees, we like to know they're aligned with our direction, they know where they're heading. And it's for our benefit, but more for the employee's benefit when we, uh, um, you know, we're just making sure they know where the industry is going so they're really tied to, to the future direction of our business. So um, today I just want to give a bit of a, a bit of a timeline what, what I've seen in the last five years. So um, my business, we started about five years ago. Um, I'm 38, so, um, so in that past five years, we've seen a huge change in the industry. So, um, I guess our business is um, CHG Integrated Wealth, where what's called an integrated advice business. So we're a business that um, has accounting, it's all listed here, advisory, corporate finance, estate planning, self-managed super funds, we have a wealth division, we've got a finance division, um, we have a medical, so we specialise in, in relation to advice for doctors and also a tax and accounting division. So when we talk about integration, um, and we'll, we'll, I'll touch a bit more on that a bit later. So, we're a team now, um, in five years, we've grown to about 30 staff members. Um, we've got six in the Philippines, so on top of that. Um, and I'll touch a little bit on the on the theory behind that. Um, so, I guess five years ago, um, accountants, when I was in the industry, uh, before I started my firm, accountants were very much history recorders and, as opposed to history makers. So what I mean by that is, they're always looking backwards um, with their clients. So, um, I guess traditionally a client would bring their work in and they'd be, they'd be forced to come to the accountant every year um, because there's, there is, um, you know, he'll lodge your tax returns every year. So um, the accountant would provide a, provide a set of financials and it mightn't be until you know, the end of the financial years of 30 June, they mightn't provide these financials to the client for maybe six or nine months later. So clients got very little value out of the transaction. So um, I guess what that, what that did is a lot of clients didn't generally enjoy going to their accountant because one, they, you know, they be charged a fee for getting very little value in return. Um, so a lot of these firms five years ago were caught within the compliance trap. So it's very hard to get out of that continual cycle where you must lodge tax returns on a continual basis. It's very hard to change your systems to to start looking forward. Um, so when I was in the industry, I was a bit disillusioned, I guess. But then, um, I guess when we started our firm, we started look how do you how do you change this perception, or how do you change this backward looking, um, and how you're dealing with clients. So it was probably um, about the time we started, we really started to see the cloud accounting um, come to um, come to fruition. So zero was probably changed the ball game for us, whereas we jumped straight onto that zero bandwagon. And what zero um, enable us to do was give real-time advice. So um, I'm sure you're privy to most of you are privy to how Zero works, but it's a live bank feed which gives you real-time data on clients. So it enables you to have real-time discussions with clients on how their business is. So in comparison to what might have been, yeah, when you were providing financial statements prior to Zero, you're giving them information that's nine months old. It's really hard. You know, businesses are in the now, so they can't make decisions on old data. Um, Further than that, they had a they had really big uh, add-on ecosystem, which I'll show you, that enables um, you know, clients to really improve their business processes. So a lot of efficiencies have come with, with Xero and also um, by just having real-time data. Um, so I guess um, another thing that we really saw three or four years ago is that graduates really had to start having computer and, techni and, and technology skills was a must to become an accountant. So in the past, it wasn't as necessarily important, so there's a lot of the older brigade that were sort of left behind when this cloud technology came into play. Um, another probably part that we brought in pretty early in our firm was what was fixed price packages. So I guess the traditional model was an accountant would prepare a set of financial statements and you know maybe slip the bill under the, uh, under the financial statement and say, please sign here. And it was really bringing a divide between the client and the accountant. So, um, you know, and, and a lot of firms in the past were based around time billing. So the client rang up, you'd hit the, hit the buzzer and the, and the time would start procuring. That'd be added to their file and might be added to the end of your bill. So it really stopped a lot of clients from calling their accountant because they were scared they'd get a surprise bill in the mail, but it'd be tacked onto the year-end work. 
So we sort of changed that model pretty quickly by utilising fixed price packages. So our clients can ring us any time without fear of um, being sent a surprise bill. So we'll ask our clients what kind of services you're after. And generally it's around, hey, I want to contact you at any time. Um, you know, I want my financial statements done. I want my compliance stuff, all my compliance stuff done. But also a lot of clients want to catch up on a regular basis. So in the market we deal with just a small to medium market. So it might be turnover from 500,000 to some of our clients go up to 10 or 20 million. Um, you can, in the small business market, it can be very lonely out there. So um, it's really good. Sometimes we call ourselves a bit of a counselor, I guess, when the, when clients come in, they just want someone to talk about and whether they're making success. And sometimes they just need a bit of a pat on the back to say, hey, you're doing great. But it's really, really um, difficult um, unless, you, unless you're catching up with them on a regular basis. Um, so I, I did want to show uh, everyone some of these apps that are out there at the moment, which has really enabled us to give real-time advice and really give businesses a lot, a lot more value. So I spoke previously that there was very little value in the transaction, but nowadays, and I'll just see if this comes up, but I guess that around zero there's been a lot of um, a lot of yeah, technology or app developers who have built the plug into zero. So some of the things that um, are out there at the moment and, uh, in, in the inventory land is, is Bend and um, I guess some of the ones that really help businesses are point of sale systems where previously a point of sale system for say a local cafe might cost them five grand or something like that to implement. Now you can get you know um, software as a subscription, so you might pay a fifty dollar a month. Um, um, subscription, so time saving there, um, getting real live data out of there. Um, we use a number of these ones, Try, time tracking ones are really cool as well. So, you might get a lot of construction industry clients who, you know, if you don't have a proper process in place to track log on, log offs, you know, but it can be, you know, even if it's a 15 minutes per day time, but you might have 100 employees, it really adds up to your bottom line. So, some of these, um, I give you some of these apps give you efficiency. Um, but also can save a lot of money. Um, payment systems, so there's ones here that really speed up the payment system. When you're in small business, cash flow is king, so you've probably heard that a lot. So you know, getting your money in the door a lot quicker, um, some of these payment systems attached to zero, so you, you know, you've got your Stripe, um, PayPal, um, Square's a little cool one that you can plug into your mobile phone, so all, all the trades are out there getting payment there and then. Um, invoicing on, on the spot, so, you know, we're seeing a lot of what's called tech tradies now. So the, the traditional tradie was um, someone who'd write, you know, go to the house, write their quote out, send the quote through maybe an email or something along those lines. Whereas nowadays people are quoting on the spot, they can do the job on the spot, they can do the um, take photos of the job and do the invoicing all at once. So um, yeah, payroll, we use a number of these payroll ones to um, systemize our payrolls, bills and expenses. There's pretty much, you know, there's, there's, I think there's 500 apps out there now for every type of business. Um, let me just jump back out of that with a bit of luck. Um, so, from there, probably two to three years ago, we probably started seeing, um, yeah, we're out there looking for more, we're growing at a rapid rate, and we're out there looking for probably a bit higher qualified accountant. So, probably something with about that five years um, qualification. We found it really, really hard. Um, so, we were using the traditional means of um, word of mouth and also, you know, a little bit of LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn stalking, I guess, is, is probably prevalent with you say with CPA, make sure you have a LinkedIn profile because we're out there, we're out there looking at it. Um, but I really started to see that there was a gap in the market with those five years experience and we sort of sat down with one of the senior tax managers and we sort of pinned it back to saying, hey, the GFC was about 2009, you know, business was starting to really contract, I guess, at that stage. A lot of finance jobs were going elsewhere, a lot went over to you know, to the mines and so forth. So we found a bit of a gap in the market then. Um, so we had to, and we also found that re recruiters were really um, cornering the market. So, um, so as a bit of a segue there, the, the recruiters, a lot of people were going to recruiters because recruiters would do your resume. They would do all your interviews with your, um, with your prospective employers. So a lot of professionals were going to recruiters, but us as an employer, we're going to, every time we have to deal with a recruiter, it costs about 20% of the actual pay packet. So we had to start as a business, start going, one, well, there's probably a lack of the skill and qualifications that we're looking for, two, um, yeah, we've got recruiting fees, it's really uh, impacting on us, it's the wrong decision, it can cost you, is it? Um, so we started looking at offshoring some of our activities. Um, it was sort of on the bandwagon of that cloud accounting where you can work anywhere, anytime, um, and we settled on, we trialled a lot of different areas, I think we trialled India, we trialled Vietnam, we trialled, uh, and we ended up settling on the Philippines with that very similar 
um, timelines to us. So I think there are a couple of hours behind, I think, from memory. Um, but be that as it may, um, the, uh, we've got a team over there at six, and all they do is the pure number crunching stuff, which is, which is isn't that exciting. And I think Alec Malik spoke about that, about the automation of the uh, number crunching. And it's probably where, as a as a grad, it's, probably, it's important you know your debits and credits and you go through that process of doing how to prepare financial statements, but it's probably not where you want to be for forever. So yeah, that move towards offshoring or automation, I don't think it's an issue whatsoever for, for any young grads out there. I think there's a shortage of, as I said, of um, qualified accountants out there at the moment. Um, yeah, we started to see a lot of firms opening up, um, you know, we saw a lot of, uh, you know, people with maybe five or ten years experience who, you know, they were sort of um, worried with the direction that their firm was heading. So a lot of the principals were probably getting closer to retirement. So the old style firms, um, you know, for someone to go and change their entire systems, which would be practice management moving over to zero to get real time advice, you know, you'd have to close your office for a couple of weeks, train everyone up, it costs, you know, probably 50 to 100,000 bucks depending on the size. So we saw a lot of these old style firms just hanging on to the to the past, I guess, and they're they got really left behind in relation to, um, you know, a lot of clients were jumping on their bandwagon and just, they wanted to know that you're up to, up to scratch with that. So um, then we started seeing a lot of um, people just starting their own firms up, starting their own accounting firm, purely because you could do it on a laptop. In the past, there was a lot of probably barriers to entry to being a, a, a running an accounting firm. Um, you know, you need all sorts, all sorts of software, uh, photocopies, um, but now everything's online. You can pretty much, and you can pretty much work anywhere. Um, you know, I can work when on holidays with a laptop quite easily. All our systems are cloud-based. Um, though I try and steer clear of that's probably one of our rules, but sometimes it's a bit hard when you're running, when you've uh, got 30 staff. Um, so one or two years ago, we started seeing a move towards integrated device, um, and um, it was great to see uh, a bit of chat with Scotty. Niblick and um, SC was an earlier adopter, I guess, of the RG146 program. So um, I guess integrated devices, services around, predominantly around financial bro uh, broking and financial planning, which we've got in-house. So what we say to clients is, hey, we've got our accounting division, which they normally, it's normally the entry into the business. Um, once we've got your accounting under control, we know your business is, we know how your profits are. It's important that once the profits flow out of that business, it goes into your hands, you know, you've got to, you know, there's no use having a successful business if you're not going to be looking after those funds when it gets to your, into your personal hands. So that's where we see it as, a, as I guess we call our integrated device board. We all sit around from different areas of the business and add value to the client, the client and the centre. Um, so there was a few changes, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, now, now it's almost a requirement to have your RG146 if you're working in an accounting firm. Um, so we're currently going through getting all of our staff skilled up. We've seen the C CPA move into um, an AFSL now. So, um, yeah, it was great to see that SEU probably foresee, foresaw this was happening, I think, 2013, so a long time ago. Um, and probably the reason why um, accountants are really starting to get qualified in this area, the way I see it, is they are becoming the true trusted advisor. Um, you know, we probably saw um, in the self-managed super fund sector especially where they, where they brought in probably the RG146 to combat some of this was a lot of the property spookers are out there selling property with no qualifications to clients or giving kickbacks to certain people. Um, and your self-managed super fund is there to provide for your retirement. So I don't think we're gonna see the what, the damage that was done by a lot of these spruikers going in and, and putting properties into financial planning until you know, start, a, lot of them, a lot of them start to retire and go, hey, you know, it probably wasn't the best advice at the time. So I think it's brilliant that they are bringing in all this extra qualifications because um, I think the client's going to be the end, the end winner. Um, so today, or to one year ago, really starting to see, well, this is where we're at, is starting to build the trust online. So um, I've even got a marketing guy up the back there. So some of this stuff, like a lot of clients are time poor, the new generation, Gen Y, Gen X, they're really computer savvy. We use a lot of Facebook, LinkedIn, MailChimp, Instagram, a lot of video. Um, and a lot of clients are making these decisions online, so who they want to see. So it's really important that your online presence is, is 
is um, enables those clients to make those decisions that they, they want to come and see you. You know, the old traditional model, I think we surveyed our database and it was 85% uh, of clients were through either a professional referral or personal, or a personal referral. That is um, all well and good, but it doesn't enable you, there's a lot of time that can be in relation to personal referrals. And we're at a stage in the firm now where we are probably pre-vetting clients to see if they're a match for our firm as well. So you can burn a lot of time in that area. So building that trust online can really, um, can really, uh, yeah, can really help. Um, we're seeing the automation continue to rise. There's, a, there's some more software we use called Class, which is similar to Zero, I guess, real-time self-managed super fund um, data. Um, we're also seeing um, firms will continue to integrate across several disciplines. So we've even seen the big four now move into the legal industry. So um, I think everyone's starting to realise, hey, we need to be, in, we, the accountant's at the centre of everything. They're the trusted advisor and everyone wants to jump on that bandwagon and start, and start using those channels from the, from the accounting to, um, to get to clients. Um, we're seeing the big four move in, in the small and mid market, but they're, they're probably struggling a bit to get as much traction as they would hope. Um, I think people still want that face-to-face you know, advise a one-to-one -one type scenario. Um, so where do I see the future going? Um, I think partnerships will come key. Um, so for us as a business, yeah, we can probably foresee that at some stage we'll move into maybe marketing or maybe even into legal as well. Um, general insurance, I think, is probably an easy segue with the RG146 qualifications, I see. And it's, it's quite surprising me when you look back and you go, at some stage when you're doing some uni subjects, you go, well, why am I ever going to... Am I ever going to need this? Why am I doing it? But it really comes in circles and all of a sudden you go, it starts to make sense why I'm doing this marketing or why I'm doing this legal studies or, you know, it is all part of accounting in some way, shape or form. Um, so when you, I don't know whether you do too much on, on business valuations or anything along those lines, but I guess the traditional accounting valuation model was it's about a dollar for dollar for fees or even a little bit less. But once you start adding all these other services into a business, Really, um, if someone's coming to buy, it really negates the risk that, um, you know, it's the old bank philosophy. When you go to a bank, they try and put a fence around you, they try and get your home loans, they try and get your insurance, they try and, so it's too hard to leave. So I think um, a lot of practices will start to, you know, put a fence around their clients and start offering all these other services. So um, some of the, um, we're starting to see a lot of firms who are starting to be specialists in the industry. So as I said, we, we, we look after a lot of doctors, so you can really um, streamline your business processes to, Ensure uh, to get your advice out at a, at, a, at a reasonable cost, I guess. So, really adding value to clients. And we're probably starting to see a little bit of a few challenges. I don't know whether you guys um, follow too many of the entrepreneurial educators like the Entourage or Dent Global. So, they're really starting to probably move into trying into our space as well. But I think they are also struggling with probably the lack of qualifications that you still require to, um, to be a CPA, I guess. So, but we are seeing everyone sort of going, hey, I can really see this small to medium business advisory sector is where you want to be. So, I think that yeah, everything's, um, yeah, the world's your oyster, really, for, for all these out there. Um, and it's, the last thing is, yeah, one, one of the things we always say in our office is innovate or die. So, we, um, <laughs> we've just seen, yeah, this five years has just gone so quickly in the changes. If you're not keeping up with those changes, yeah, I, I think you'll get left behind. So, um, I really think, yeah, it's an exciting industry to be in, and just the, far, the last five years is a testament to that. So, the next five like that is in for a hell of a ride. Um, questions, I think we're going to save till the end, but yeah, thanks everyone.